and I cheated. This goes in the bag to check through, so I don't have to carry it on the plane. No. The, my, my obsession with, with making small kits started in 2012 when I had to fit a full broadcast production kit for a reality show on a solar-powered boat, which was seriously lacking in space in every respect, and power, and comfort, and a few other things. So I, I um, learned a few lessons from that and kept some of the gear, but there's been a few changes in, in recent times that I think are worth, are worth considering, and this became my, major, my main camera. I was thinking about maybe I could get an A7, I could maybe justify that, a nice toy to buy. And then I realized that I would already be carrying an iPad. I was much better set it up to, 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 um, to use a better iPad. I gave them justify buying a better iPad. <laughs> um, but what makes it practical is an iographer. Who's familiar with these devices already? Right. Okay, it's it's not the only thing in this class, but it's the it's the one that I like best because it works. Um, I I like Dave Basalto who, who does it. Um, this is not perfect for an iPad Air 2. That's coming out in February, so I couldn't use the supplementary lenses. But what happens is and now you have a. A camera that holder, you've got cold shoes on the top here, there are accessories to get audio in and out, but more importantly, this extends up amazingly, it's a great uh, Manfrotto tripod, but and now I've got a camera that is better than the cameras that I was using for, for production five years ago, but, um, and gives me something that is always going to be time accurate, it's always going to be GPS stamped. Um, and when we come to using Lumberjack, the time accurate Lumberjack system for real-time keywording, the, uh, the, the, the uh, a time accuracy becomes very important. But that's not all. I already had two NEX7s left over from from that uh, Solar Odyssey expedition in 2012, and I love these cameras. They, they're great, they're a great still camera, they're a, a really good video camera, but the limitation is they have a tendency to overheat, so they could not rely on them for extended interviews. So that, that was a good second camera, and I certainly set up everything as a, a two camera shoot, um, because I like the flexibility in editing of having uh, two cameras and a multicam. Um, so I carried two of those. mainly because I have one for each lens, and I uh, used those as my second camera. But I didn't want to carry a second tripod, so Gorillapod. Are familiar with these? Now, this, there's always a compromise, and, and this, is, this is really what this kit is about, is what is an acceptable compromise for the job that I'm going to do. Now, in my, in my case, it was family history. Um, I don't need to do massive dolly shots. I don't need to do um, certain levels of um, production values. What I need to do is to have a good quality recording of both the audio and the video, and that was my goal. This was a great mount for my second camera. The limitation is you've got to have something to mount it on, either to sit it on, to wrap it around, to hang it from. I've done all of those things with, with these Gorilla Pods. But, and I own, I own about seven of them in different sizes. Uh, so if you ever need to borrow a Gorillapod, hit me up. <laughs> uh, um, so there, there, are, there are a limitation in that you've got to have something to hang it from, so you may not get the ideal optimal camera position for your second camera. Uh, as I said, it's all a, a trade-off. And these were acceptable compromises for the job that I had in mind. Um, light, need some light in these cold shoes, and I've got the adapter for that, of course, in here. I, uh, I particularly like the light panel's chroma because we can go from, from matching for daylight to matching for incandescent and everything in between. Now, the downside is if you're traveling internationally, you either need an international power supply or you need to buy a whole lot of AA batteries. The good thing is the AA batteries are available pretty much everywhere because you, you'll burn through a set of eight in, in about 20 minutes. That's been in my experience. How many? 
Six. I mean, it varies. This is a light panels, and it's a chroma is the model number. I'm not sure if it's a current model, or, but there will certainly be something similar. I have a couple of light panels. This one was the was the brightest that I have um, in the small form factor and had the adjustable color. So for this particular job, it really was doing. It was the right choice for for me. Um, and that pretty much uh, finishes the video side. These make great images. These make good images. Um, together they make fairly acceptable images. But we, the most important thing is the audio on something like this. You can have all of the video quality you want, but if your audio is bad, then everybody's going to perceive the whole project as bad. So I have multiple belts and braces for, for audio. I, I was prepared to lose a camera. I could lose two cameras. I could substitute my phone as a camera if I had to, but I couldn't substitute good audio. So I had short shotgun just uh, that would be my fallback last possible position is is on the on the lens on the iographer and feeding directly into the iographer recording there um, that's an iographer by the way if i didn't mention that but the next thing i had was uh, this is a 128 gig ipad and i did a about two hours of, of actual recordings. Um, unfortunately, uh, Michael was not quite right, as I didn't get, for a whole lot of reasons, I didn't get half the, record, the interviews that I wanted, so I'm going to have to go back in four years. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I got about two hours in interviews, and it didn't really hiccup. Um, now, what I want to show in a moment is, is the way this is set up. Actually, I can, probably can have it set now. If I... And, and this piece of software called Filmic Pro, you can turn the house lights up. <laughs> um, Filmic Pro is it's, it's not a bad little light for, for the amount of power it uses. So, um, the iPad is using a piece of software called Reflector, which. Uh, neither. It's using Wi-Fi, I guess. It's AirPlaying. A Reflector is an AirPlay client for a laptop or PC, um, Mac or Windows. What I love in Filmic Pro, and this is really what makes the iPad or iPhone a, a viable filming device, is that we have control over where it should focus and where it should look for the exposure. So if I was to... Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's probably wide open at the moment, but um, the idea is that you can set the exposure, you can set, you have a lot of control over white balance, you can bring out a whole bunch of little um, accessories here. So it gives you a lot of a cam control, including um, a little shot box. So you've got a three, a three position zoom shot box, as well as manual uh, control over the zoom. You can set those up to whatever zoom ratios you want. It's it's like five bucks for the software, uh, and it turns the it turns the yeah five dollars probably four ninety nine. If it's uh, if, look if it if it's fifteen ninety nine fourteen ninety nine don't 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 uh, jump on me. But it's pretty cheap software. Uh, reflector to get the image on the screen was more expensive. I'm pretty convinced of that. Uh, so this is what makes makes this viable. That and the fact that we can work with double system sound, which. This app is called Filmic Pro. It's not Filmic Pro. Um, that's, that's the icon there. F-I-L-M-I-C, Filmic Pro. Um, so, so for audio, I have a number of choices. I have this very cute little radio mic set. That, um, that is rechargeable off USB, so it, it travels with me very easily. Uh, and because it feeds out an, an unbalanced signal to record. Uh, I've only ever used that in, in the real world once. I thought I would probably use it feeding into a separate recorder, 
but I also fall back. I could feed it into into the, the Filmic Pro. One other thing that I should mention on Filmic Pro is that you can set the data rates to record at higher than standard data rates. So you can record at 30, 35, and 50 megabits per second. And you can do uncompressed audio, so you're not stuck with the low quality audio and lower quality over compressed video that the default applications will give you. So there's all, there's, there's those advantages. But my main audio, which is why I'm glad that the fallback position was to lapel mics, um, was a bunch of lapel mics that I bought for Solar Odyssey. So these are, um, uh, what is it, Ars, not Ars Technica, Ars, um, anyway, they're cheap, they're only like 50 bucks. So if, if they get destroyed, I don't really mind. I carry spare batteries. They come with an overly long cable, and then I shrink wrapped a smaller cable to make a smaller package to make it um, shrink, fit into pockets. But I feed those straight into these Zoom H1s. Uh, hmm? Audio, Technica. Audio Technica, thank you. And it's it's like 49.99 at, at um, Amazon. I'd, I could look up the model number for you if you really were interested in that, but I'd have to go to my Amazon history. I don't keep details. What I do love are these little recorders. This is the H1, the Zoom H1. You've probably heard much more about the 4N and the, the bigger brothers. These are great because they, they can record, you know, you can take SD, micro SD cards up to 8, 16 gigabytes or longer and, and record pretty much all day with, with full quality audio. So I, that was my fallback position. I carried two of those, two microphones, plus the radio mic and a third H1, just to make sure, plus the microphone to make sure that I could get good audio. Because my fallback was that I had to have good audio. No matter how poor the video ended up, I had to have good audio because that was what would ultimately sell a, a family history. Uh, I ultimately used the, the basic, this feeding straight into one of these. Okay. Nope, completely, just completely separate system recorded. So I had two cameras. I had this camera recording. I had the, one of these cameras recording. And I had the audio recorder and I made multi-clips out of that out of that, um, based on sound in Final Cut Pro 10. And the other thing that I was uh, doing while I was shooting was that I was logging with Lumberjack system. I was keyword ranging as, as I shot. So as um, I did most of the interviews at my auntie's place, I did my mother and um, interview. And then I, as I asked each subject, I simply tap on. So uh, talk to me about leaving Tasmania. Some of our family left Tasmania. Some some of the family stayed in Tasmania. I'm part of the family that that part of the group that uh, escaped, and I'm so pleased my family did to a bigger city than the small one. Um, and all I had to do was, as I change questions, is just change um, what where I turn those on and off. What happens then is I'll show you a little bit later what happens in Lumber in Final Cut Pro 10, but all of that logging is already done for me. You know, simply by that tapping on a few checkboxes during the shoot. So the thing that makes this really work are Filmic Pro, and in my case, also the, um, the use of Lumberjack to log it. Uh, other important things you can't do without, spare cards. Lots of spare cards, spare batteries. Um, I chose not to carry a laptop, so I was risking um, my cards and my iPad being there until I got back. Uh, so I, that, again, this is part of the, the calculated risk of do I want to carry a laptop, meaning another bag, another couple of pounds everywhere I went, every, every part of the trip? And the answer to that was no, I didn't. The other very important things, of course, you will need the travel kit from Apple for all of your Apple devices. Um, it's a great charger that comes with that. It's, the, it's an iPad level charger, so it's a two amp charger. It charges an iPhone super quick, too, super fast and you can adjust and adapt the plugs to whatever country you happen to be going in. And that's fine for, for all my Apple and USB devices. I can also use that to charge the radio mic, because once you look at standard USB, you're looking at standard USB. But the other device, if you're traveling internationally, you'll need is something like this that allows you to plug anything to anything, because the battery charger for the batteries for the NEX7s is a standard two-pin American cell plug, and that's not going to work in Australia. I have, in my youthful past, taken a very big pair of pliers and bent those pins around to make them fit, but I was younger and a lot more foolish. 
and, and I didn't have to ever bring them back to the United States and use them again. Uh, and the other thing that I didn't take that I, I feel that I should have taken and I would not not leave out of the kit in the future is, is a car USB adapter because not every car has USB power in it, I've discovered. Particularly my mum's 10-year-old car doesn't have USB power. Hmm. Or oil, as it turned out. <laughs> Something I discovered on the freeway when the car shut itself down because of it. Was it a Holden? No, it was a Proton. Yeah. <laughs>